good morning, everyone. Um, I'm in this video. I'm, I want to introduce the the I/O framework I wrote. In uh, it's called Kitty. Kitty is basically you can think of it as a C sharp version of a native framework. If you're familiar with Netty already, you you may find Kitty to be very, I mean, very handy and very very easy to use. And uh, so, a lot of some code, uh, it's it's parted from Java code, but um, um, I heavily modified from there. Did a lot of simplification and um, uh, try to keep it simple and uh, remove some unnecessary complex uh, complexity. From there, so in this video, I want to show you a little bit uh, the, all the some basic usage, and I want to show you why I think it is uh, fun and I think it is a very good pattern, and uh, I want to show you what I can do with Katy. So let's start. Let's start with creating a um, very simple. Let's create a new project to start from beginning. I want to call this product. I want to call want to call this project like um, Katy Text Server. How about that? And uh, create directory for solution. Here we go. Okay, now we have a very simple solution. We can try to start. Uh, nothing happens. No, it's too fast. Okay, good. Now we should first thing I want to do is I want to install the noob get package for KT. Uh, KT, yes, yep, that's mine. Install KT have independency in the log for J uh, log for net. Sorry. So now we already have KT. So if you're familiar with Netty, you will know it's all based on handler. So I want to write a how about let's write a, a discuss handler. I mean discard handler. So public class my handler. I want it to extend from a basic one called um, simple channel upstream. Handler in Katy's term upstream. I mean, not next in Katy. It's in in Netty's term up upstream and the okay spelling wrong. So upstream means the input means the incoming message or incoming packet coming from the I mean external. So because now we are programming on the server side. So as the upstream handler, what you want to handle is to me when message is received. So now if you if we remove this one, just remove it. Now this this one become a discard service. So now what I need to do here in the main is kind of start a service and using that handler as a handler. This that's how it works. So when you want to start a service, you want to do is um, first uh, create a I channel. First, create a channel handler factory. This is a factory method, and each time it gets invoked, it need to return. Um, A array of channel handlers, and currently there is only one item in in this handler chain. This, which is our discard handler. So I think I, I think this one is not necessary. I'm using lambda expression. It's very handy. Okay, here we go. And now it's very easy. Now we can start a server equals to new. We already have some uh, harness to help you uh, simple TCP server, which is, hmm? did I spell wrong? Uh, simple, a simple TCP service, sorry, spelling wrong. 
service. Here we go. Uh, as a simple TCP service, you want to do is set handlers and give this handler factory to it, and also bind bind to a port like 2008, uh, 8002. How about that? That's it. Now there's really no much we want to do here. We want to wait console console read line and one more thing I want to do here is to configure yes it is to initialize the <gasps> log for net that's it so now we have a very simple discard server so putty, where's my putty, and uh, the log is localhost, protocol is raw, and uh, 802, and uh, save it, open. So now we see it is connected. So if we input ABCD, of course it's been discarded. Yes, it's discarded. Now if we close it, you will see it's channel closed. Yes. So it's very simple to add something to make it even become an um, object message equals to... I want to make it echo service. So basically we can read the message and write it back. Channel channels right and uh, we need the channel here get channel yes and uh, message that's it that's how this is read the message out and write it back and we can see a big point here or not start it and put it and uh, connect to it yes. you see it's connected and if you input something here see it's all echoed back Yes, and if you set breakpoint here to, I want to look at what is the message looks like. A B C D. Yes, the message is a dynamic bit buffer. Dynamic buffer. You can you can think of it as a bit array. Now you have four bits in it, and the, what are those four bits? It's like this. It's four bits, but I think it's missing something. The I think the slash r slash n is in next packet. Yeah, yes, the next packet have two, so that's that's how it works. I I think it looks like a client side problem. It's a putty problem. I I don't know why it's kind of break down break it down into two of them. If I use the um, uh, Mac Linux Ternet client, it's not like this. So another thing I want to show you is uh, how to how to use chain handler chain handler chain is uh, for example uh, now my handler I want to I don't want to deal with the uh, here this handler one one work this handler has to be doing is uh, to do the line breakdown otherwise you can see that the same message can break into two packages and we want to reassemble them and uh, we want to program it on a higher level protocol instead of uh, handling those low level stuffs. So what I want to do is reusable component called uh, uh, line break line break decoder yes and uh, now if I put line break, line break decoder is is a upstream handler and also it's a downstream handler as upstream handler, it takes a kind of a, a I bit array, a bit buffer, and uh, look for the uh, slash r slash n, look for the line break, and uh, convert the line into a string and pass it down. So my and as a downstream handler, it take a string object and convert them to a bit array and uh, append the line break sign at the end. So if you run again. You would see the 
you will see it's still functioning the same way. But if you set break point here, you will see the message. Now instead of beta ray, it becomes a, a string. And also the line break is get removed, which is very handy. And you can still write it back. It's, it still works. It works perfectly. And uh, so now you are programming on a, a higher level instead of uh, the low level bare metal stuff to hand dealing with all the beta reassemble and the converting stuff. So what else I can do? We want to do. For example, if we want now you can start with this, you can implement your own um, TCP uh, server like if message equal don't equals to now split equals to message dot split right and uh, we can return uh, string plus split zero and we can we can if I, I want to rep I want to implement a, a RPC service to can add two numbers together so left side is split split zero and int parse split zero good and in r equals to in parse split I, I'm, I'm very lazy, I, I omitted the error handling and the, the, the parameter checking r plus r that's it so, ok message equals to, yes that's how it works now if we run it again If we input uh, one column two, yeah, we have got three. If we hundred column, yes. Uh, now you can see you can actually use Caddy to do any to implement any kind of TCP uh, based protocol as you want, as you wish. But actually, practically, but I I, I kind of discouraging. I highly discourage you from doing that. The reason is, uh, typically, what you want is to adopt an existing protocol instead of reinventing wells, and uh, also you want to uh, adopt existing maybe higher level libraries to do something. To don't start to programming f from from metal, from bare metal. Here, I want to give you an example by re-implementing this add service with JSON RPC protocol and also I want to reuse a JSON RPC library which is already there this crazy little man is what I want so uh, this one will bring in the J Newton JSON library as well so it will handle all the JSON stuff and the serialization stuff for me so the code is looks like this public class calculator and uh, JSON RPC service eh? RPC service yes I said JSON RPC service you want to mark this one as a JSON RPC method yes and uh, private hmm? private double add will take a double left double right and return as left plus right yes and here we want to static calculator e equals to new calculator Uh, and here we want to replace this part because here message already aligned we already 
remember we already passed through the line break and uh, that's become a uh, we don't need to go stream reassemble the stream anymore so here I need a little bit rewrite channels right the first parameter parameter is the channel itself so we can read it from the context get channel second parameter is the message body itself in this case this is going to be a string so this is going to work I think I want to remove here's one more and here this line is message yes so basically what it does is create a async object and uh, enqueue it for asynchronous processing and after it's done it's a callback we'll get called and what we do here is to write this message back into the channel which is right back to socket so pretty much that's it that's all what I need to do to hook it up so now we have a, a JSON RPC service putty 2002 C is connected and a sample request we can send is something like this You see, 1 plus 2 equals to 3. Here we go. So, it's that's it. That's how simple it is. And uh, believe it or not, it's this server is highly efficient. It's fully asynchronous, and it can utilize all your CPUs. And also, it won't it won't use too much. It's fully asynchronized. So, and highly scalable, and maybe almost minimize the memory footprint. It's um, it's that simple. So. I think that's that's what I that's all what I want to show you today. Uh, I highly encourage you to to download the code and play with it and uh, to give me feedback. Tell me what you think and what is the most wanted feature from you. I want to uh, I want everyone to to have fun with it. Okay, that's it. Um, that's all for today. Bye bye. Thank you for watching.